G'day, I'm Andrew Watt from Hutchin and Pierce. Thanks for joining us for this informational video. We'll take this opportunity to remind anyone operating large machinery to please read the operator's manual and take notice of any warnings. Today we're going to be talking about the 7760 cotton picker and the data coming off that machine. We'll look at the importance of good data capture, the different types of data coming off the machine. We'll look at some different scenarios you may be faced with in the field in terms of screen setup and picker setup. And we'll finish by looking at some helpful tips and tricks on how to best set up your picker to capture the most accurate data. Let's begin with the different types of picker data. When looking at the different types of data coming off the 7760 cotton picker, we can look at it in two different categories. The first one is normal harvest documentation. And that harvest documentation utilises the screen in the machine, the receiver on the roof, and the mass flow sensors located behind the cotton air ducts. The second one I want to talk about and want to mainly focus on today is harvest identification cotton, or also referred to as HIDC. Now harvest identification cotton is an extra controller on the machine, and it utilises the RFID reader on the round module. Uh, it reads the round module tags on the cotton module itself, and records information in the screen in a text file format. Now that text file captures a variety of information including latitude, longitude, the serial number of that module ID, uh, the client, farm, field, variety, as well as the gin or the, uh, the producer ID. So this text file is very important because it allows us to communicate with the gin in the right format that they're after when we're booking our modules in. Now let's look at the different screen setup scenarios you may be faced with. We'll start off talking about the um, base scenario if you don't have a screen or, or a harvest identification cotton through to when we do have harvest identification cotton and the latest technology built in. Okay, first scenario would be if we had no screen in the machine uh, or we had a screen in the machine but we had no harvest identification cotton. Now in that particular case we would need to manually locate and manually uh, catalogue our modules in our fields. Remember, each wrap roll does have 24 wrap portions per roll, but we can't go and look at the first round module that we've done for that field and our last and then try and extrapolate the data in between. Uh, each wrap roll is going to have a different uh, serial number than the, than the next, so they're not going to be sequential. So that does mean we do have to identify and catalogue each uh, module individually. The next scenario we might have is when we have a screen in the picker and we have Harvest ID cotton fitted to the picker as well. If we have a 2600 screen capturing this data, we'll have a compact flash card located in the side of the, the, side of the screen itself. Now we always have to have a compact flash card in the side of the 2600 when we're picking. That's making sure that we're gonna capture that data. You can pull that compact flash card out and hand it off to the, the grower or the farm manager. It's a good idea to have two compact flashcards per picker. That way, we don't have to wait for that compact flashcard to come back from the farm manager or the grower, so we can continue picking and capturing that data all day. The next scenario would be if we have a 2630 as a screen in our machine. In that particular case, the HIDC text file is going to be captured on the screen itself and all we need to do is insert a USB stick into the right hand side of that screen and download that documentation data. That can be done each morning or each afternoon, totally up to you, and that USB can then be transferred to the farm manager or the grower. It's a good idea to have two USBs on hand though per machine, just in case we, uh, we end up not grabbing that data uh, or that USB stick back from the grower at the end of every day. We have a spare one up our sleeve. The, the last scenario we might encounter is if we have a 2630 machine and we have harvest identification cotton fitted and we also have a JD Link MTG built in. So what's a JD Link MTG? That, that's uh, allowing our machine to communicate wirelessly to the MyJohn Deere cloud. In that particular case, at the end of each field or when the operator inputs or requests a, a data download, the data can be wirelessly sent from the machine directly to the cloud. From there, either the gin or the grower can access that file and there's no need for a transfer through USB stick. Finally, let's look at some best practices when setting up our machine. Now this will be similar between a 2600 and a 2630 as the applications will be similar. We'll look at setting up our documentation task first to make sure that we have our correct information set up in our GS2 or GS3 page. 
and then we'll go into the application controller and we'll set up our HIDC or our harvest identification cotton to make sure that it's capturing the correct data. Let's look at our simulator to uh, identify and talk through each of those pages. Let's start setting up our documentation. Select main menu in the bottom right hand corner and then our green star icon. If it's a 2600 screen, this may be called GS2. If it's a 2630 screen, this will be called GS3. Once we're in the GS3 icon, select F in our top right hand corner and make sure we're back on our green star main setup tab. From here, choose documentation tick box and that'll ensure that we're going to be entering the right data to uh, turn our documentation on. Select accept and that'll begin our wizard. Once we're in our wizard, let's set up our resources. Let's put in a client, a farm and a field and that needs to be the same as what we've put in our gin booking form. We also need to put in a task and make sure we're selecting first pick cotton. We can give it a crop season and an operator ID and we can also choose to turn field locator on. This requires an external boundary. So if we have our boundaries being uh, brought in from our Apex, our John Deere software into the screen, and we have a boundary for this particular field, this will eliminate the potential for operators to be documenting the uh, current pass in the wrong field. It'll give us a warning every time we enter and exit a field boundary, which is very, very handy in terms of maintaining that data integrity. Once we're happy there, select next. This will take us to our machine. If we're plugged into a picker, it'll automatically select the cotton picker from our drop-down box, give it a machine model and a machine name, and that should populate our offsets on the top. If they're incorrect, we can change those offsets in here as well. Our recording source should be default to auto, and that'll turn on and off as soon as our units are lowered and engaged in picking cotton. Once we're happy with that, select F to move to our next page. In here we're setting up our implement and in this particular case it's going to be our Pro Series heads. Give it a model and a name and that'll automatically determine our offsets down the bottom. We can change our widths and our offsets from this page as well if they're not correct. Also we can turn overlap control on in here as well. So if there are any times where we're going to be not taking a full width, so we're going to maybe have two picking units going down two rows that have previously been picked, we can turn overlap control on which will automatically shut off those two picking units and make sure that we're capturing good quality yield data. Once we're happy with that, choose our F button to move to the next page. Next we're setting up our operation for our documentation. If we've chosen first, first pick cotton, this will automatically go to harvest. Select change harvest settings give it a cotton crop type, a brand and a variety, and also a, an estimated gin turnout percentage. Once we're happy with that, select F, and that should tell us our setup is complete. At any stage, we can go back and change those settings by going down our icons on our right-hand side of our screen, through our resources, our equipment, and even our documentation task. Okay, next, let's set up our Harvest ID Cotton. Depending on the software version running, you may see Application Controller located in your tasks or your icons, or you may also see Harvest ID Cotton as a controller here. Select that controller, and that should take us to our Harvest ID Cotton main page. From here, we can reset our counters uh, for either the field totals or the season totals, depending on what you like to see in those two boxes. And if it all is running smoothly, we should see wait for module down the bottom. Next, let's go to our settings icon, which is the arrow pointing up to our dot, and select Harvest ID Cotton Setup, which is our first tab at the top. In here, we need to put a gin and producer ID, a machine serial number, farm field variety. And if you are running the newest version of software, you will see an extra icon down the bottom right, uh, the bottom of the screen, which will allow us to pull in that data directly from the Green Star or the GS3 page that we previously set up. It is a good idea when setting up our machine serial number to have an identifier in here. So for example, if it's not the exact machine serial number, put in the client or the farm ID and that will allow the gin to uh, have more accurate data on their end. They do end up with a lot of machine serial numbers being number one or number two. 
Once we're happy with that, and we've got entries in those fields, go back to our main page. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you learned something. If you have any more queries or questions, feel free to contact us at Hutchinson and Pierce Tech Site on 0259245111 or visit us at hutchinsonpierce.com.au. Hutchinson and Pierce Tech Site, technology enabled customer support with a vision to keep you going.